Welcome back. Yes, to watching the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And of course, the race for the vice uh, presidential slots in the ruling parties, uh, the All Progressives Congress, and the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, are uh, taking a definite shape. Uh, sources have said that if those opposed to the Muslim Muslim ticket uh, in the APC succeed, the likes of Simon Lalong uh, would be in line for consideration. Now, this has come on the heels of the Christian Association of Nigeria, a can, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN and, and an Arewa coalition, as well as uh, APC national stakeholders cautioning the APC against fielding a Muslim Muslim ticket. So that's the issue as far as the All Progressives Congress uh, is concerned. Now, in the People's Democratic Party, uh, sources are saying uh, that despite the strong claim being made by the Southeast uh, for at least something to go there with, having lost out in the presidency or the presidential uh, 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 run in that party, the battle is panning out as a straight one between Governor Yesen Wike of River State, who came second at that primary, and the Governor of Delta State, Ifani Okoa. There's been rife rumor that uh, uh, Wike has gotten it. But uh, Okoa was a member of the committee that conducted uh, the primaries that held in Abuja. Well, we have joining us uh, to discuss this, analyze uh, the tussle for who becomes the running mate in the two leading parties, the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party, we have a political analyst, Hademi Saka, I must say political satirist. Hademi Saka is definitely not a satirist. Um, you welcome to the program. It's quite an interesting one. You know, the, the, yes, the whole drama that is playing out. Let's start from the, uh, the People's Democratic Party, because that seems to be where there are rumors that are rife. Um, some rumors, really, really heavy ones. Last night on social media, this morning, one paper has gone with it. The nation is whether Wiki has gotten the ticket, uh, the running mate slot in the PDP. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think this uh, rumor could be true? Yeah, well, I, if the rumor turns out to be true, I article, Alaji Atika Baka might have made his choice, but for watchers and someone like me, I don't think that's a smart choice. Because the, the, well, the running mate is assumed to be the, a potential vice president. And, oh, our, our activity since um, the return or advent of uh, civilian or uh, democratic rule since 1999 is the vice president in charge of the economy. We've seen how battered the economy is. As we speak right now, inflation is 37 percent. Food inflation is almost 18 point something percent. Um, unemployment is also around over and around 40, 42 percent. So you want to bring in a wiki that has no economic background apart, aside from just being the governor of River State. Or you want to bring in an Okoa, that is, a, that is his background is in medicine, if I'm not wrong, to become to sit atop the economic affairs of this country. We've seen what a lawyer has done in almost seven years. The economy has been battered. We need somebody that knows the figures. We need somebody that knows about management, economic management policies, and what have you. So the two choices um, being put forward by APC, for me as an individual, is not impressive enough. No, but, but does it really matter, I mean, who becomes a vice president, whether it's an economist or uh, whether the vice president comes from a certain region? Because we have seen, like you already know, um, the vice president is, 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 is as good as you know, um, a person who takes orders from the president. He can't do beyond his uh, stipulated uh, roles uh, that has that been put out. So, so what difference does it really the make? The vice president is also, if, uh, by, based on what we've been practicing since 1999, is the top most diplomat in the country. Can you beat your chest and tell, you, tell yourself or convince yourself that we can make a good diplomat for the country? Wait, 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 wait. Does it talk like one? Are, are, we, are, we like not, one? are we not putting a lot of uh, uh, expectation unnecessarily or on putting expectation uh, on, the, on the office of the vice president? You see, when, let's when, when some analysts <laughs> have said, I didn't miss okay, the vice president is just basically ceremonial. It's just a, a piece of furniture. Okay, uh, the vice president, whether we like it or not, is, is in the presidency that can act as a mm -hmm. president at some point, or that could be the president at some But point. how many times have we seen the vice president in this administration act as the president? The yeah. one time that the vice president acted, I mean, we also have, the, you know, we got stories and reports saying um, the president wasn't impressed. We saw that the vice president took some certain actions. He felt like it didn't really sit well, you know, with the president or those um, uh, calling the shot, as they would say, not proven, the cabal, even though we're still in denial of all of that, 
uh, we haven't really seen the, the president transmit power. Over time, the president would travel, but has not transmitted power, and he would work within the jurisdiction of how long he has to stay away from office. So does this really matter wherever the vice president yeah, comes um, from? It matters, because whether we like it or not, um, there are constitutional rules uh, for the vice president. As much as people want to argue that the vice president is a spare tire and extra tire, the National Defense Council, the retort schedule, I think that is part G of that schedule. The vice president is the vice chairman. The National Security Council is the vice chairman. A lot of um, um, bodies are probably um, arms of government and everything. The vice president plays a role. And even when it comes to the National Economic Summit um, of the country, the Vice President is, up, I think, I believe is the Chairman. And National so, Economic Council. Council. Yeah. And, you know, that oftentimes only supervise the National Economic Summit group activities and what have you. So how do you want to pick somebody that doesn't have the requisite expert experience or qualification to sit at top of the... And an economy that is battered, dwindling? But, but the, point, the point I think Mercy and myself are trying to... To, 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 to make the question we're trying to ask is rather, is that um, are we not placing you know, unnecessary more expectation than normal on the economic qualifications of whoever should be the vice president of Nigeria? When number one, Ade Misaka, we have the, the manager of Nigeria's macroeconomy, who is the central bank of Nigeria governor. In UK, they call him the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yeah. In America, they call him the Chairman of the Federal Reserve. Yes. We have the Minister of, um, of, of Budget and National Planning, number two, yeah. and we have the Minister of Finance. Yeah. You know, these are three important key stakeholders in managing Nigeria's macro and micro economy. Uh, some would argue the Vice President just needs to have organization, leadership, leadership skills to just put people together. You do not have, need to have a first class in, in economics no, or a PhD. Just yeah. have, have the ability to put people together to, to sit down and say, what do we need to do? And everything is subject to the president. And uh, she's even you know, reminded us that um, at some point, you know, all those RCCG people that those, those sharp looking guys that they brought into the vice president's office who were there. And you remember when the president went on, on his medical vacation, at some point things were moving really fast, if you remember. And at a point, there was uproar that a lot of people or a lot of aides in the vice president's office had been moved out. And the presidency brought people in from the office of the presidency to man those positions. And then we saw the resultant effect. People who pay taxes in this country, who have had to grapple with FIRS, who tell you that they know the point where things started going south. And they link the two. They link the two. Um, so, so some of these things, some will argue, it shows how limited the powers of the president, or the vice president can be, despite what we see as his head of National Economic Council. It's purely ceremonial. But let me say this. We, we, a, we, we can excuse that we've, because at the time we said we don't even need the qualification of parallelists to address so much of the credentials at home, Mr. President, or whatever comes up. That's when we said even if it's a Nepal, Nepal um, bill, we'll take it ahead of any certificate from an investor. And we saw where it brought us. We're in a peculiar situation that we have to just get it right. We've wasted almost seven years in our national life. We cannot afford to waste two, three more years. That's why we need every resources we could pull together to get this country, pull us out of doldrums. We are in a mess. That is where I'm coming from, my opinion. Okay, all right. Um, um, we still with the PDP. Yeah. Um, we're hearing two names. If I call our Delta State, Yes, Obike, River State. Um, the Southeasterners are saying, you know what? We need to get that vice presidential slot in the PDP, we were cheated in the primaries, but at least at all, at all, I am bad pass. So <laughs> give us something. Um, do you think the People's Democratic Party should be looking that way? Well, uh, if, if the PDP wants to go look south, is the only, for me, the only formidable or permanent or political personality there, or political exposed person there, right now within the PDP, and if you want to judge by the last, um, the special presidential primary that was led by the PDP's um, former Senate president, uh, former SGF, um, Senator Haim Payos Ayim. Okay. Yeah, but it's... Uh, but, uh, uh, why, why, why do you think Ayim is, is, is the only person from the South? No, he's the one. I said judging the, judging last, by, but the okay. last presidential okay. primary, okay. it was, he put, uh, that, I think he put, it was a guy that, it was a man that pulled the largest vote from South East, from that region. But, you know, there's a, there's an ancestral course by Hohan is in the born, and in, Southeastern and other statistics. <laughs> so I don't know how. Uh, how they go to. And I don't think he wants to take it as a person. 
I don't think he wants to take it as a person. And if you look at them, the temperament and you know the conduct and what have you, you might want to lean towards Anokoa. But um, so some other people will tell you that, we, are we sure if you pick Anokoa, you have a replay of I made him a betrayal accusation in future because a lot of people will tell you that for what um, Governor Koa, for whatever heights he has risen to in politics, is all thanks to the former governor of um, Delta State, James Ibori. So are you going to divorce him from James Ibori? Are you going to have Tough a one. vice president that's going to be under the control of a godfather? Are you going to have a, um, a vice president who somebody might start saying is his benefactor? We saw how that played out in the APC, how some said felt Vice President Emmanuel Shibaji is a betrayer. It was nobody. And I was wondering, somebody that served in the presidency is in the 80s. I'm wondering how somebody that appointed as a commissioner in the in 90s made him. Hmm. Hmm. So this is quite interesting. If Okoa becomes vice president, what are the chances that he will not be controlled by Ibori? It's not even about the control. Everybody wants to exert, you know, exert his power and authority. No, no, but, but that, I mean, we can't even take that out of, you know, uh, the Nigerian politics, the politics of Godfatherism. He thrives all the time. And I, I don't see that leaving any time soon. So whether or not, I mean, someone who's the president would definitely would have and been... I don't think Article 1 will pick Wiki. Based on Article's experience, you know, Article... In 1999 to 2007, was a victim and was an actor. Victim about victim. When I say victim, how the president used his force and might against him. That was Alicia Gombasojo. Actor because of the way he played the politics and how much he wielded so much influence in the presidency as a vice president. So, so do you see um, the PDP going outside of this or the names that have been mentioned very I, popular? Because uh, we, we're beginning to see, you know, some quarters saying that, not verified, that, you know, there's a possibility of uh, a Donald Duke, former governor of Cross River State, you know, no, being that, considered. Even apart from that, there's another name being, you know, banded around. I, I there were three, one of the three names then, that was Mudon um, Emmanuel of Akwaibon. I don't know how he just, I went, I got off the list, but it was that at some point. <laughs> so we could look at Donald Duke too. We could look at Donald Duke. Options are, the options for, so for Atiku. So, so, so but do, do you see, do you see Atiku, you know, moving away from these names that I, are very I, popular I, I, I probably, going beyond I that? I see Atiku not picking any of these two guys. Well, what is the importance, of course? I mean, Donald Duke sounds um, exciting. Uh, mercy. <laughs> but what are the, what are the, 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 the the chances of you know having somebody who's a political choice for somebody who is a popular uh, choice. A, not a popular choice but um uh, uh, an ideal candidate like you've talked about you know somebody needs to have at least um a track record of some economic management success okay you let know me, uh, and no links to godfathers like you talked about so that nobody will be remote controlling him or her um but the parties are also in a position where they need to look at votes. Yeah. You know, and um, the, th the thought is that Peter B uh, emergence as the candidate of the Labour Party will eat into the votes coming the way of PDP from the mm -hmm. Southeast. You know, so so how does the party manoeuvre okay. this, 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 this? You took, you yeah, took, you took us to another sphere of conversation. I, and I, I say it's, um, when I, when I was, Pushing for the choice of economic sound vice president, mm -hmm. running mate for this for Atiku and what have you, is because they are looking at votes. They need to pick somebody that can balance the engagement and the conversation Peter is pushing out there. If you pick Adam Emmanuel or you pick a Donald Duke, they give us the same, they've been giving us the same narrative that Peter is giving Nigerians. So that could that could appeal to Nigerians. And now Peter B coming out. He's not just going to eat the votes of Southeast. Peter will be, there's a massive movement across board. And uh, I tell people, when people tell me that, no, Peter will be's followers are just on Facebook, on social media, and I ask them, those people on Facebook, are they not existing in real life? Is that not, is that, and if Nigerians decide to want to give Peter will be the structure, don't you think that structure will move? So there's a Peter will be factor there that you need to balance out. If you're looking at a vote, you can, whether you like it or not, there's a Kwan Kwasa in Kano. And Kwan Kwasa's influence in Kano 
in, it's not just Kano. It's, a, it's across Northwest. And I can bet, I can, I'm not. So you're saying that there's a possibility of a Kwankwaso and Peter Obi? Is that there might not be a possibility. You, can, you can't expect a Kwankwaso that has a secured vote of almost three, four, five million to, to jettison that for Peter Obi. There could be a merger at some point. But what I'm trying to say is this. A Kwankwaso can probably pull five million votes across board. And Peter Obi that I'm seeing as well will also pull five million votes. And that's the, that's the worst I can give to these two men. And if these two men pulled, pulled 10 million votes, what's the, what's the vendor of the votes left for APC and PDP to pick? There are quite a number of votes. But it's yeah. not, they, they will probably have... will not meet the required to third spread of the 36 states and the FCT. All right. So these two other contestants cannot be, as much as you're looking at, you want to look at votes, you should also look at the import and influence of these guys at the next dispensation. Right, they will right. determine a lot that will happen. Let, 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 let's move to the, the All Progressives Congress, still yeah, looking at the, the, interesting one. the, the, the running mate, um, uh, Ashwa has his work cut out. Um, mm -hmm. And we're hearing that, uh, you know, the decision is hovering between Ashwa and Mr. President, you know, uh, governors of the APC to decide. Um, the man has been meeting with some of those who he defeated. But, of course, we have the North-South uh, 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 um, issue in the country where parties who have presidential candidate for the South have to about North South yeah. Muslim yeah. and Christian and Christian. Muslim. So, so, so well, let's talk about the Muslim Muslim thing. It's, it's, I think we flogged it. Does anybody a lot. think about the Muslim Muslim? They should just bury it. All right. The country is divided. And I went some people tell us we need competence. I tell me that there are no competent Muslims and uh, Christians in, in northern Nigeria. And for crying out, if you're calling, if you're saying competence, President Mahmoud Bari is a Muslim. Is he competent when it comes to dealing with insecurity? Has he not failed us? Has he not even failed his Muslim brothers in the north? And you see, people should, I, 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 well, you see, it's this. You want to pick a Muslim Muslim ticket after you've had eight years of um, President Muhammad Dubai, a Muslim, as the president. President Muhammad Dubai, with his popularity, did not dare or assume or imagine they could probably pick a Muslim from southern Nigeria to run, to win an election. It always goes for Christians. It's been going for Christian. So why do you not tell me that? And you think you want to pick a northern Muslim as a running mate, and you think the northern Christians, you are not missing out their Are you want to tell me that? Are you telling me that their votes is, is it consequential? So, so, so I mean, the, 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 the party server like I said, a choice to make. Um, you're talking about, you know, the right thing to do, the ideal thing to do, which is to carry everybody along. But the, 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 the the difficulty here for the All Progressive Congress, some would say, is that they, they need to also look at how to capture as many votes as, as possible. Everyone wants to win the election. Will the All Progressive Congress get the majority Northern vote if they go for a Northern Christian, in your opinion, as a running mate? The question is, is, is Ashura Jibola Ahmed Tinubu not Muslim enough to get the, Muslim, the votes of Muslims of, of Northern extraction? To some people, they feel that the core Northern Muslim does not see the non northern Muslim, for instance, Yoruba well, Muslim, so as 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 genuine Muslim, real Muslim. You know this. No, some you people know, you know say, some people too have been coming out to debunk that and say, no, I'm a south, I'm a southerner. I, they take me as a true Muslim. And you know, it's um, it's laughable and it's funny how people say this. And I will say this on on an, on an international platform here. You cannot tell me that the voice of Christians in Nigeria shouldn't count. At this, this next dispensation, if if um, if the three parties out of four we're talking about have chosen to go for a northern presidential candidate, that's I'm talking about the APDP, the APC, and the NM, NMPP. They're all Muslims. The only the only party that has a Christian flying its flag is Peter Obi. Which it's is amongst those party. four, amongst the top leading four we're talking about now. So, but, but okay, I'm, I'm um, going to drive at some something. Okay. And we are in a country. Then the last 30 days, two people have been killed for blasphemy. And as we speak, there was no northern politician who is a Muslim that spoke, to, that spoke against the killing. No, President Buhari released a statement and spoke no, against the, the first President one. President Buhari has always been saying we should respect other people's religion. That's always no, no, but, but he, con he condemned it. If you read really statement, <laughs> he, he, he condemned it. Now, the Including question, Vice, um, yeah. former Vice yeah, President, yeah, even, even um, deleted yes, the tweet. Yeah. No, so, so you're not telling me that in a, in a government that had a Christian, that happened. What would happen if they don't have a Christian at all? No, but... Um, okay, so, to balance things, whether we like it or not, 
So, but I, we should face it. We are more divided than we were in 1999. We need to balance things. It's always been Sh not south. What, 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 what if the APC presidential candidate says, see, I'm going for competence. And competent person I've found, I don't care where they are from. I don't care who they pray to in the morning and, and afternoon and night. Question. And he finds a competent person Muslim, and as a from, yes. He says, I don't care. I want to have no, a new Nigeria. No, it's, up for, it's up to where, Nigerians yes. to either um, to <laughs> vote along that line but, or reject it. But the question is, are there no competent Christian from, from, from the north? So, but let's, let's also, I mean, we're being prompted to, you know, uh, call it a wrap. Now, but, but the question here is, the question here is, should, in 2015, if, you know, the um, consideration for a Muslim, Muslim ticket did not fly, why is the APC considering a Muslim, Muslim ticket in 2023? Oh, I guess somebody is, either, either they have been delusional or somebody is being um, overwhelmed or drunk on his um, personal ambition. That's just it. That's my submission. Uh, and there's just speculations in the, in the public And it could be speculation. Because, I mean, nobody from the party has right come up thinking, to say anything. Any like right that. thinking in Nigeria right now will want to balance things along tribal lines and religious lines. Because I do remember Shivaji put out a statement on the day of the special convention uh, in Abuja that they had not made any decision. You know, seeing some text messages have been flying out. No, no, no. It's like I said, it's up for even if they go for that, they should know that there's a Kwanko saw in Kano, so that's a Muslim that will pull northern votes. All right. All right, we have to go. I want to thank you very much for your time, Ademi Saka. You're welcome. All right, still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Um Ademi Saka is a political analyst, he's been uh, an analyst and guest on the first major conversation. We'll be back after this break to do some more talking with uh, another guest. Stay with us. <laughs>